Hi, this is your Sapnil Bharti and we are back with our very popular yearly prediction video series. And today we have with us our favorite guest, Rob Herschel, CEO and co-founder of Rack. And Rob, it's great to have you on the show again. It's a pleasure. I love this annual tradition and I'm ready to dig in. I'm actually going to pull your previous predictions and actually see how many of your predictions turn out to be true before we record this one. But I don't want to put in a tidy spot, so we won't do that. But before we ask you to grab your crystal ball and share your predictions with us, quickly remind our viewers, what is Reckon all about? Reckon is a bare metal automation company. So we write software that helps uh, large enterprises run data center infrastructure much better. Uh, dramatic cost and time and performance savings across the board on uh, their, their bare metal infrastructure when they're using our product, Digital Rebar. Excellent, thank you. Now it's time for you to pick it's virtual, bare metal, whatever kind of crystal ball you have, pick it, pick it up and share your predictions with us. So this is going to be a year that it, in some ways is going to be very boring for IT and terrifying for IT at the same time. And, and it's a little bit unfortunate from an enterprise perspective because the two biggest trend lines that we see converging are ones that don't have very clear answers for enterprise IT at the moment. The first one is the VMware. Uh, migration and pricing, right? That is a uh, seismic crisis for most enterprises where they're looking to find ways to reduce their virtualization budget. But there aren't a lot of clear alternatives for uh, a VMware migration or a VMware exit plan. And that's going to cause a lot of angst for uh, companies all across the board. And the second one is GPU, AI, LM, LLM. And from our perspective, right, that there is clear ROI from employing AI and machine learning into the systems. But most enterprises really don't know how to do that yet. They don't know how to build their own systems. They're very reliant on third parties, on SaaS providers, on uh, potentially risking their data sovereignty. So they know they have to do a lot of work here. They know it's a critical, critical component for their IT strategy, and yet, there aren't a lot of clear answers yet on what a reference architecture looks like, what people need to buy, how they're going to run those components. So we're at a point where the challenges are very well understood, but the answers to those challenges are really missing. And that's what I think this year is going to be about. Thanks for sharing these predictions. Looking at these predictions and looking at the market today, what kind of challenges you see are going to be there, not only for the whole ecosystem that you folks play in, for your customers and even for you folks? The challenges really come down to what I see as a reference architecture struggle. So the, the way the IT industry really works is there are very few people in the industry, very few companies that, that want or have the resources to play a true innovator leadership role. Uh, and so what happens in the industry is those leaders, both companies, vendors, ecosystem, and enterprises, tend to work to establish a reference architecture that other people can follow quickly on. And that's really helpful. It sounds like a small group of people are doing the work, but what happens is as those reference architectures converge, then everything accelerates behind those leaders. And the leaders get a really advantage on that. Everybody else coming in behind it helps build the ecosystems. The challenge that we have right now is we're missing ecosystems around virtualization. We're missing ecosystems around AI, LLM, on-premises and self-managed. And that means that we have a real vacuum in the, in the model. So there's a challenge here for people to figure out what's going on. And if, if you're listening to this and you're like, yeah, I really want that reference architecture, you know, listen, contribute, talk, research. Um, some of this is just going to take time to emerge. It's going to take you know, companies making some decisions or highlighting. Um, what we see is that for most companies, the thing to do is not to dash ahead into an unknown state. It's actually to do a better job taking inventory. Most companies don't have a very firm grasp on what workloads they're running, how they're running it, uh, what they need to do. And so this is a really good chance, while it might not save you a lot of money in the short term, while you're waiting for clear guidance to come out, it's actually really useful to come back, do a survey, really understand what workloads you have, what infrastructure they're running on, what requirements they truly have, sort of pay down that technical debt. Uh, that is a very good use of, of time in this year. Thank you. Now, 
I want to throw a curveball here, which is more or less like, what are the things that you wish to happen, but you know for sure won't happen? The thing that I would love to see happen, um, you know, I, I don't actually wish to see, although I think a lot of people want would like to see this, to see Broadcom relent on their pricing and, and come down. I, I think that what is going on here is actually not a virtualization crisis from one vendor. I actually think virtualization is very challenged. And so what, what I like to see in the market is I like to see uh, these these titanic shifts that are going on where we're actually shifting our whole architecture approach. And so what we're hoping to see is that people reevaluate the, their whole systems. They take a systems approach for what they're building and how they're building it. Uh, you know, RackN is a bare metal company. Bare metal is a core component of everybody's infrastructure, regardless of what platform they put on top of it. But we get really excited when people start asking these questions about, wait a second, do I need to buy the same type of infrastructure with the same density or commodities or footprint that I've been doing before? So we're really excited to see and hoping to see people want to talk about you know, re-architecting the bare metal layer considering different architectures, more power efficiency, uh, better cost savings, you know, a distributed infrastructure instead of a vertically scaled infrastructure. All these things are really opportunities that we see, and I would love to see companies actually scratching their head and questioning some of the core assumptions that have been driving infrastructure for the last 20 years um, when it's been virtualization dominated. What is going to be the focus of Racken this year? Part of what we see from a virtualization challenge is that there isn't a real easy exit for companies from VMware. And, and face it, most companies are very deeply invested in VMware. The challenge is not replacing VMware, in our opinion. It's actually shifting the way we consume virtualization. And so our investment here is actually not on virtualization migration. We do great jobs supporting all sorts of virtualization platforms, including VMware. Our, our customers are some of the largest footprint VMware uh, users anywhere on the planet. And yet what we see and what we're helping uh, move is that they're taking their containerized workloads. So Kubernetes for enterprise, a lot of that means OpenShift, moving that to running Kubernetes instead of in virtualization on bare metal, and then investigating using Kubernetes as their virtualization platform where they can. So a Kubevert coming up or uh, in Red Hat terms, OpenShift virtualization. What we really see happening here is it's very hard to move from VMware to another hyper-converged or virtualization platform, but it's much better to actually move your workloads. Most companies have already done this. They've worked to containerize their workloads. What we are doing is working to finally make Kubernetes on bare metal a reality, make it have the same cloud-like capabilities, rapid dynamic provisioning, multiple cluster management, all of those capabilities, we're helping empower that migration so that the people who've already invested in Kubernetes can move that off of virtualization and move it directly to bare metal. The savings, the opportunities for re-architecture are tremendous. Um, we see this as a really high ROI event. And I'd mentioned earlier how important AI and LLMs are into enterprise considerations. The thing that people don't realize is a lot of that work is also being done with Kubernetes. And so it's really a two-level win for companies that are doing this work. If they're doing Kubernetes on bare metal, it helps them migrate away from virtualization, and it helps them build the skills they need to really supercharge their AI efforts in the future. So it's a, it's a huge win for companies, so, somewhat held back by the need for reference architectures and stable designs, and literally that's what RackN is investing heavily in doing for this year. Rob, thank you so much for sharing these predictions with us. And as usual, I, of course, will have you again at the end of the year to talk about the next predictions, but we'll see you before that for sure. Thanks for your time, and uh, we'll look forward to talk to you again soon. Bye. Thank you.